which that currently isn't covered by flood insurance. I put this in a highlight. Um, the National Academy of Sciences and FEMA are required to do a study of the maintenance of flood insurance. In other words, will, uh, what will it take for people to maintain their policies and the affordability framework. So here we are saying that insurance is not going to be affordable, but we need to do a study of affordability and giving people incentives to maintain their insurance. Um, I'm uh, very active in the National uh, Association of Floodplain Managers, and we've been pushing very hard uh, to get that study going, and we're, we're, FEMA's been lagging on it. Some of the bills in Congress are saying we want to delay any of these rate increases until that study's done. Uh, what the national flood groups are suggesting is that people should have an idea of what the risk is. So they're, they're suggesting that if your actuarial risk is $9,000 a year, people should know that. But if there's a need to subsidize people so they can afford to carry flood insurance, that should be an overt subsidy rather than this sort of cross-subsidy among policy holders. And maybe there should be a voucher program or something like that. Um, and they also uh, is a study authorized on a, uh, a national catastrophe insurance. And some people in the insurance agency uh, uh, world have been saying, rather than flood insurance, wind insurance, earthquake insurance, maybe everybody should pay into a catastrophic uh, insurance fund that covers all of that. Options for the homeowner. Um, even if you have a pre-firm house with the basement, Get an elevation certificate. Find out what you're dealing with. How high would you have to elevate to bring this into compliance? Um, get some idea of how quickly your, your phase in, your, your rates are going to phase in. It just gives you a tool uh, so you know what you're dealing with. Consider elevating your utilities, even if you have a basement. And I've talked to people at FEMA about this. Uh, would you consider get, giving some sort of break on insurance? Let's say the house has a basement but the basement is cleared out and all the utilities are elevated. And this is a person that does insurance rating for FEMA. And he said, well, quite frankly, for houses with basements, because we don't cover the finishings in the basements, the vast majority of our claims are for replacing the water heaters, the furnaces, that sort of thing. So it makes sense for them to analyze how much of a break you can give to people for elevating those at risk, most at risk parts of the structure and help people get back into their homes more quickly after a flood. Um, this isn't a done deal, but I could promise you that FEMA is working on this and studying it. Um, and, and people really should look, the people who can't afford to finance it should look at uh, long-term financing of, of actually bringing the house uh, into uh, code compliance. And here's a couple of examples. Um, this is a house across the river in Ulster. Maybe not the most attractive house in the world, but it is compliant. I hope this homeowner isn't sitting here and I'm making fun of his house. But um, here's the lowest floor here. We have a lower level here. It is used for building access, storage, or parking. That's allowed. And it's got vent openings. Those openings are a little higher than they should be, but uh, they should be a little closer to the ground. But the purpose of those openings is to equalize the flood forces on the building. Um, this is a house in East Rockaway down on Long Island. Uh, when we were working with some communities after Sandy, uh, a few of the uh, local officials that we talked to, we said, do you have any examples of structures that were built to code with the two feet of freeboard uh, and how they fared at Sandy? And this was one. Um, this home was remodeled uh, 